Hello, my name is Robert Sutton. I'm a professor of surgery at the University of Liverpool and the Royal Liverpool and Broad Green University Hospitals NHS Trust. I'm also currently director of the NIHR Liverpool Pancreas Biomedical Research Unit. And I'd like to tell you today about a study we've undertaken in an endeavor to develop a drug for acute pancreatitis. A pressing need, in fact, because there are no licensed therapies for this condition that are specific to it. Hello, my name is Rajashi Mukherjee. I'm a National Institute of Health Research Clinical Lecturer in Surgery. We'd like to talk to you today about our research study entitled Caffeine Protects Against Experimental Acute Pancreatitis by Inhibition of Inositol Triphosphate Receptor Mediated Calcium Release, published recently in the journal GUT. Caffeine, epidemiologically, would appear to be a potential route in because studies have shown that the more coffee that is drunk, the less likely pancreatitis is to get a grip of you. Additionally, in the laboratory, we have shown that caffeine blocks calcium release in pancreatic acinar cells, inhibiting the inositol trisphosphate receptor signaling mechanism. So we have examined the impact of caffeine and its dimethylxanthine metabolites, theobromine, theophylline, and paraxanthine, and their effect on pancreatic acinar cells, isolated pancreatic acinar cells. And we have also assessed the effect of non-xanthine-based phosphodiesterase inhibitors, as well as cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. We have also examined the impact of the methylxanthines and the other compounds on toxicity assessments in pancreatic acinar cells. So we firstly observe that dimethylxanthines, theophylline, paraxanthine and theobromine, and caffeine inhibited acetylcholine-induced and IP3-induced calcium signals in isolated pancreatic acinar cells in a concentration-dependent manner. To further investigate whether these effects were due to direct inhibition of IP3 receptor-mediated calcium elevations, a membrane-permeable, caged IP3 analogue was loaded into pancreatic acinar cells and we found that repetitive uncaging uh, causing sustained increases of cytosolic calcium were inhibited in a concentration dependent manner by caffeine. We went on to observe that caffeine and its dimethylxanthine metabolites inhibited IP3 receptor mediated sustained cytosolic calcium elevations, loss of mitochondrial membrane potential and necrotic cell death pathway activation in pancreatic acinar cells. In vivo, it's very important to establish that the levels attained of these potential drugs or actual drugs is at a level commensurate with what we see in vitro. And we certainly demonstrated that the impact of administration of these compounds is to block calcium signaling at quite low levels less than one millimolar, and indeed for uh, paraxanthine, most particularly lower than 500 micromolar. So when we measure caffeine and other methylxanthine levels, we find that they are present in the circulation at a concentration that is commensurate with their identifiable effects on inositol trisphosphate receptor mediated calcium release. We carried out an evaluation of caffeine in vivo. We found dose dependent protective effects of caffeine but not theophylline or paraxanthine on the severity of cerulean acute pancreatitis at 12 hours with further protection observed on all pancreatic injury parameters in both mild and severe cerulean acute pancreatitis at 24 hours. Furthermore, we found caffeine displayed protective effects in both bile salt induced and fatty acid ethyl ester induced experimental acute pancreatitis models mimicking gallstone and alcohol human acute pancreatitis.
Overall, the results from our in vitro experiments, as well as our in vivo experimental pancreatitis assessments, demonstrate that the most likely method of action of caffeine and its metabolites is by blocking inositol trisphosphate receptor mediated calcium signaling, and that this has a protective effect in experimental acute pancreatitis in more than one model. As a potential treatment for human acute pancreatitis, caffeine has limitations because of neurotoxicity, and therefore it provides a medicinal chemistry template from which we can potentially develop new compounds that are more specific and safer. We'd like to thank you very much for listening to our presentation on caffeine and hope that it will be useful in your ongoing endeavours, research and to be informed about work in acute pancreatitis. Thank you. Thank you.